Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm going to be showing you the best Wu Qian build on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for raids. Now this one's a bit of a tricky one. We do have to collect eight stakes in order to open a gate to get Wu Qian because it's one of the four legendary Pokemon of Ruin. So the purple stakes are the ones we're going to be collecting and they're going to be in the bottom right corner-ish. The first one is going to be right here. So I'll put your waypoint here and we're going to head there now. So fly over to Artisan West. And then when you're up here, the first one will be right here. You just want to collect that and then you want to pull out the stake then after you collect it it will vanish the second one is going to be right here so what we're going to do is we're going to fly over to lost platos east so from that pokemon center right there all you want to do is come up here and then you want to climb this wall when you get to the top of the wall on your left you'll find the second stake as for the third stake we're going to be putting a waypoint right here and making our way over so you can just make your way over from here you don't need to fly anywhere so you will start to see the glowing once you get to the end here and then you just want to climb the wall and collect it so the fourth stake is going to be right here so what you want to do for this one is you want to fly over to Mesagoza East Gate or South Province Area 3 and make your way over so this is where the fourth stake is you have to climb a wall to get there let me zoom in so you know where you're going so it's just climbing this wall right here and then we're going to collect it so that's four down four to go so up next we're going to be putting a waypoint right here and flying over to Los Platos East and making our way over so we need to climb that big mountain right there once you finally get to the top where this water starts then right next to it there will be your stake all this talk about about stakes making me hungry okay up next we're going to be going to this spiral right over here so let's zoom in and put a waypoint right here and we can just fly over from here and make it as far as we can and then we're going to be climbing all the way up there and once you finally make it to the top you should see the stake right there so now there's just two remaining up next we're going to be putting a waypoint right there flying over to east province area two and making our way over so when you get to this bit right here you should see the stake it's at the last bit of the green bit right here let me show you the map real quick so right Right here and when you've made your way over here you can just collect your stake and that will be number seven so our next one is going to be right next to the hidden cave so we're going to put a waypoint right here and then we're going to fly over to Paco path lighthouse and make our way over so you will have to climb this big wall right here to get up there once you're up top turn right it should be right at the end before you drop down to this pool right here and you just want to collect that which is the final stake so when you pull out the last stake you'll hear a skirt noise then it'll say you heard a mysterious cry coming from the shrine all you have to do now drop down once you've dropped down turn around there'll be a big purpley inky like shrine here save the game i am nowhere near prepared for this because this is my pokemon violet account but bring a quick ball some timer balls and a load of ultra balls then you want to go up to the actual shrine faint sound is coming from within the shrine and then you want to touch the shrine and then it will rattle rattle or rumble 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 and then you layer a kabang and the shrine will just collapse and this little slug ball will come out of it that looks like that thing off monsters inc then you just want to battle it and catch it its ability will reduce your physical attackers by 25% so keep that in mind I killed it by accident so that's why you want to save just before in case you do kill it by accident or run out of pokeballs or it wipes out your full team and then you've got to go through the process again the shrine gets sealed again but that's how you catch it anyway now I'm gonna switch back over to Pokemon Scarlet to show you the build now that you know where to get it we're gonna be running a grass type terror and we're gonna be using the life orb I'll show you where to get the life orb right now so if you fly over to Mesigals of West and then follow me we're gonna be going through this archway right here as soon as you go through it turn right and we're gonna keep going until we get to the bottom of these steps that begin right here when you get to the bottom we're going to be turning left and following this road until we reach this uh, supply shop not supply shop deli bird shop and then we're going to be clicking bat lines scroll down about halfway you will find your life orb you just want to click on that buy it fifty thousand poker dollars once you've got your life orb equipped we're going to be going back where we came from so i want you to run back to the top of the stairs and then i want you to keep going until you turn right right here next to this battle field and you'll reach the transi supply shop just go in there and then you want to scroll down until you get to the light blue mints and you want to buy the modest mint this will get our special attack up and our attack down so grass type terror life orb and modest nature now our evs are going to go into special attack and hp because we're going to be doing a special attacking build and you want to make sure you have max ivs on everything except attack now wo chen will come with free max ivs when you catch it because it's a legendary pokemon to get your other ivs to max all you have to do is visit a deli bird shop and then you click on general goods and you can buy bottle caps for 20,000 poker dollars each bottle cap turns into one perfect iv so depending on what
what your wall chain actually has right now you will need two or three ball caps once you have your ball caps fly over to montenevra and then we're going to be going forward until we see a guy with an obama snow speak to him he will hyper train your pokemon then you want to click your wall chain and click ball caps and then you want to click hp defense special attack special defense and speed just leave attack we're not going to use it so our ability is going to be tablets of ruin we get that by default and what this does is it reduces all the attack of every other pokemon by 25 percent when we get into the fight so the boss that we'll be fighting will be 25 percent weaker if it's a physical attacker all four of the ruin pokemon have this ability just for a different stat on each one and the moves we're going to be using is giga drain growth taunt and snarl now giga drain is going to be our main move it will recover a lot of health and it will do a lot of damage especially with life orb growth is going to be our power up move unfortunately we cannot learn nasty plot this will boost our special attack by one stage taunt will be our third move this is for them pokemon that have like thunder wave spore yawn and all things like that our fourth attack is going to be snarl this will decrease the special attack of our opponents so we've got our ability to decrease the physical attack and snarl will decrease the special attack by one stage and we get stabbed from it so that's nice now originally i was testing out leech sheet instead of growth it seems that growth is just a little bit better because you're outputting more damage and the raid ends a bit quicker so giga drain and growth we can learn through level up you don't need to worry about those two however we'll need to learn taunt and snarl through tms if you don't know where to get tms you can come to any pokemon center it's the green section the tm machine so we're going to be learning tm30 snarl first we will need 800 lp three mastiff fangs and three squawk billy feathers i'm going to show you where to get those right now the mastiffs aren't too hard to find come to the bottom of the map we're going to be going to south province area for watchtower just fly over there and as soon as you get here you're just going to be looking around the tower to find one it shouldn't be too long until one actually appears so there's one right there we're just going to take that out and that will get us our mastiff fangs next up we have our squawker billies to get our squawker billies we're going to come over to the right side near artisan and we're going to come over here so you want to fly over to artisan east and make your way over so i'm going to make my way over right now so as soon as it says east province area one you'll be able to run into it it is easier during the day because ghost types don't spawn there's one right there so we're going to take that out and that will get us our squawker billy feathers there's also a pack of them right here and once you take out your mash chiffs and your squawker billies you will have tm 30 snarl so next up is tm 87 taunt to get taunt we're going to need 3000 lp free meow for free say blight gems and free sneasel claws so let's go get them right now to get our meows we're going to fly over to medali west once you're at medali west we're just going to be going around the edge of medali until we find either a meowth or a persian you should find one relatively quickly once you do find one you just want to take it out and that will get us our meowth next up we will need our sneasels to get sneasel i'm gonna go around this area right here so i'm gonna fly over to zappa pico west and then we're gonna make our way over and we're gonna be keeping our eye out for any sneasels and we're just gonna be progressing up the mountain keeping to the left on this road right here so we have found a group of them right over here so we're just going to take them out and this will get us our sneasel claws now to get our sableye we're going to be flying over to east province area 3 watchtower and then from where you're standing i want you to turn this way so we're turning right and and just keep going forward and edge left a little bit we're going to be going into that crater right there so hop down into the crater and go in the cave now once you're going through the cave i want you to go through the right part of the cave go all the way to the end and then just turn around and then as you can see pokemon will start to actually just come through the wall so just wait for them to come through the wall and then you can take them out and this is how we're going to get our say bly gems so now that we've gone over our full build let's get into some raids so our first raid is going to be a five star water type crocodile let's get straight into it so our tablets of ruin does activate and it's a physical attacker so we don't need to worry about that and we don't have to use snow so what we're going to do is we're going to use growth as our first move this will increase our special attack by one stage and then we're going to start to use giga drains like because growth doesn't up your special attack by two stages it's not going to make the biggest difference in the world but it will do a considerable more amount of damage so it uses torment which isn't good i could have used taunt there but i didn't think it had any moves that weren't physical and could do anything to us that's my bad i am now going to use growth it nullifies the stats on our side so we're no longer plus two special attack and now we're going to use giga drain because we're under a torment we're going to have to use giga drain and then growth and then giga drain and keep going like that and then it uses earthquake which won't do much sad its attack dropped a lot because of intimidate and our ability steal some of our terror charge which is really not good 
and then its shield goes up. Removes negative effect from itself. So we have to use growth here. That will raise our special attack by one stage. And it does use counter. It can't do anything to us because we're not a physical attacker. And then we use Giga Drain. We're just chipping away at that shield right now and trying to get our terror so we can do some real damage. We do lose HP every time we attack because of life R, but we get that back because we're using Giga Drain, so that's fine. And it's 50% more damage. So we are doing quite a lot of damage here. Just not as much as we could have been doing if he didn't steal our terror charge. So he does get a critical hit on us to take us to about half health. And we have to keep switching between Giga Drain and Growth. So we do do a, a little bit of damage to him and get some health back. And then he uses Earthquake on us. So now we're going to use Growth. That Torment was a really big problem for us this raid. It was my bad for not sorting that out. But now that we have our Terror, we can start doing some really good damage. I'm not sure what we're on right now. Plus two, I think, in Special Attack. Don't think we got to the plus three since he nullified all our stats. So now that we've terrestrialized, we're going to use Giga Drain. It should do a ton of damage, and it does. It actually nearly kills him, and now we go back to full health. Because of the Giga Drain, you should never die with this Pokemon, really. And its ability that decreases the attack and Snarl that decreases its special attack. It's a really, really strong Pokemon. It's got the fourth highest special defense on the game, I think, and it's got really high normal defense. And it doesn't even hit that bad when you're using Giga Drain either. So it's a really strong tank that can output a lot of damage. And then we just use Snarl to finish it off because we can't use Giga Drain again because of the Torment. And then the Crocodile goes down. Let's move on to the second raid. So our second raid is going to be a ground type five star Garchomp. Let's see how it goes. So our Tablets of Ruin decreases his attack by 25%. We're going to use Taunt just in case he has anything like Sword Stance or anything like that. Does use Dragon Claw. It is a critical hit. And now we're going to use Growth to up that special attack by one stage. He uses Earthquake. It's not going to do much damage. It is another critical hit, however. Now, when you start to get around half health, I would suggest start going into your Giga Drains if you haven't already. You should get all your health back, if not most of your health back with every Giga Drain because these raid bosses have so much health. He uses Iron Head. Does no damage. It's not a crit this time. I can't believe he got two crits in a row. So we use Giga Drain again, doing some more damage. Hopefully we get a third one up before he puts his shield up. He uses Earthquake again. Let's see how much damage this does. So it does about 40 damage, not too much because of our ability. He does use Sword Stance, which is not good. That means our Taunt has wore off. So we're going to quickly use Taunt again before he gets any shield. So his Dragon Claw is doing a lot more damage now. So we're going to use Giga Drain again. He hasn't gotten any shield yet. This should hopefully get us back up to full health. It does get us back up to full health. That's great. And now we have our terror unless he steals some charge here and he uses earthquake let's see how much this does with a sword stance does quite a lot of damage about 100 damage and then his shield goes up then he removes negative effect from himself so the taunt is gone now and we can't apply a new one but we're gonna terrestrialize and then use giga drain i'm hoping it takes off around half of his shield so we do use giga drain now that we've terrestrialized let's see how much damage it does it, it does just over half of his shield that's very good and we get back to full health it never ceases to amaze me just how much more damage you do with with your terrestrial eyes. So he uses Earthquake on us. It's doing about 100 damage still. He hasn't used another Sword Stance yet and we go for another Giga Drain. Surprisingly, Wo Chien for a slug is quite fast. So we use another Giga Drain to break that shield. He's nearly down now. He's gone into the red. He nullifies all the stat changes and everything and abilities on our side. So his 25% decrease in attack is no longer. So he does about 120 damage that time. But this should finish him off and now he's down. So this Ruined Pokemon won't do as much as some of the other Ruined Pokemon because it's more of a defensive build very bulky but it still gets the job done as you can see let's move on to the third raid so we have found a third raid it's a tyranitar water type five star let's begin so we're going to start off with a taunt because i don't know what uh, moves this thing has it could have screech it uses dark pulse that's fine i'm pretty sure that's the only special attack it's got so i'm not going to bother using snarl we're just going to use growth and raise that special attack and tyranitar couldn't move because it's paralyzed and then it steals some of our terror charge that's fine uh, we're going to use two growths in this one so we're on plus two special special attacks when we're attacking because this thing has quite a bit of special defense and then we're going to use giga drain see how much damage we're doing we're doing quite a bit of damage and now we're back up full health so i just checked this thing has dragon dance and screech so we do want to be keeping that taunt on it for as long as possible uh, so we use giga drain again taking it into the orange and now i'm guessing its shield is going to go up so it uses screech it looks like the taunt wore off this is pretty bad it decreases our defense by two stages and then its shield goes up now i don't think it one shots us with any of its moves that it's got right now it will have ice punch that could be pretty bad but it won't kill us so it uses rock slide on us it does quite a bit of damage about half of our health and then we use giga drain how much health do we get back from this about 100 health now i'm gonna terrestrialize here i don't think it kills
kills us with anything, so I think we're safe to terrestrialize. Even though we're on minus two defense, he uses Crunch, which is not too bad. And then we use Giga Drain. It does a lot of damage over half of his shield. That'll get us back up to full health, no matter what health we're on. And the next shot could finish it. He uses Sandstorm, uh, then uses Dark Pulse. It doesn't do much damage because it's a special attack. And then we finish him off with a Giga Drain. Well, that's the Tyranitar over with. There he goes, he goes down. And no surprise, the first legendary Pokemon of Ruin, Wo Chien, is a very strong Pokemon. Not only does it have very high defenses, it also has a decent special attack and a decent enough move pool that you'll be able to do good in raids with him. Now, if you enjoyed this build, then check out this one on screen right now. It is a Palisand build, very fun to use and really good against electric types. And I'll catch you on the next one.